Hello and welcome to the Top Custom Hearthstone Cards of the Week, where we look at some fan-made cards from the r slash custom hearthstone subreddit. If you enjoy the series, leaving a like would be greatly appreciated. And first up, we have Weasel Hunter, 7 mana 3-5 legendary neutral with a battle cry, transform all weasel tunnelers in both decks into Burrowing Mines. Burrowing Mines, already a card in the game, deal 10 damage to whoever draws it. So to correctly evaluate this card, you need to understand the Weasel Tunneler Priest deck. Basically, you're trying to fill your opponent's deck with as many weasels as possible. Mirage Caller, Twilight's Call, Carnivorous Cube, Nazoth, all of these cards can help put more weasels in your opponent's deck. On top of that, you also have the quest in there to try to outlast your weasel-consumed opponent, and a ton of death rattle draw to get you through the quest and your deck quickly. And the deck's pretty impressive. You can mulligan the quest to try to get more than one with Shadow Visions, and there's so much cheap death rattle draw that you can easily complete two if not three quests. But the downfall of this deck is it doesn't really have any win condition. You can try to hold onto the board with Nazoth and value from your Angoro pack, but it's not like the weasels are the win condition, they're just a way to get your opponent bad draws. If you're out of cards and your opponent is able to clear your board, they don't have to play any of the weasels you've given them and you'll die of fatigue damage. So that's where Weasel Hunter comes in. The deck would play just the same, try to get as many weasels in your opponent's deck and complete the quest while you're at it. Once you get 5-8 to eight weasels in your opponent's deck, hopefully you draw Weasel Hunter and you can play it to turn those weasels into mines. Use Amara to survive against your opponent or fatigue and your mines should win you the game. Some drawback, if you have any weasels in your own deck, they would also turn into mines, so you want to keep track of that. Also, you don't know how many weasels your opponent has drawn from their deck when you play Weasel Hunter. If they play a weasel, then you know, but they could be holding onto some, and those won't get turned into burrowing mines. Drawing Weasel Hunter shouldn't be too hard because of the amount of draw in this deck, but having it at the right time would be crucial. The deck also isn't great against aggro. The weak statted Deathrattle minions have a hard time contesting, so unless you get Amara early enough, it's tough to survive. Against control decks, healing or armor might be able to restore health in between burrowing mines, making it harder for that to be the win condition. With all these problems, let me tell you that getting a lot of weasels in your opponent's deck is pretty easy. Once you draw a weasel, it's often that you'll have a card to combo with it to turn it into more weasels. I'd say on an average opening, you can get at least 4 weasels in your opponent's deck by turn 10. Remember, that could be 40 damage to your opponent with Weasel Hunter. But that number is just being modest because I've been able to give my opponent 10, 12, 15 weasels by the time I've reached the end of my deck. And let's say your opponent draws 6 of those weasels before you turn them into mines, that still leaves 40 to 90 damage worth of mines in your opponent's deck. I think Dead Man's Hand Warrior might be the only deck that can withstand that much damage, but you also need to remember that they've played a game where they've been drawing weasels instead of their combo cards. The final cherry on top is that if you have a Weasel Tunneler in your hand, you can still play Weasel Hunter, bounce it back into your hand with a panda, put more weasels in your opponent's deck, and then play Weasel Hunter again to make even more mines. Clearly, turning weasels into burrowing mines is a bit too strong. I don't know the exact damage amount that would balance the card, but I think having mines that deal somewhere between 5 and 7 damage would be a little bit better. One of my big concerns is opponents aren't really able to influence a Weasel Priest's game plan. Kind of how Quest Rogue would just bounce cards they needed to complete their quest and win, I think this Weasel Priest would just continue to put as many Weasels in their opponent's deck, play Weasel Hunter, and just survive until the bombs go off. It's not a super interactive deck, so I don't know if making it competitive is necessarily a great idea. Weasel Hunter is a great card, I love the Weasel deck, and I think this card could give it that win condition to make it more competitive. Next up we have Lady Vaj. 5 mana 4-4 four, four neutral legendary that when in play makes your opponent's hero power autocast. Maybe you've seen from previous adventures or recent dungeon runs, but autocast hero powers have that golden glow around them, and they're automatically used at the start of the player's turn. Now you might think autocasting would be giving an advantage to your opponent, but in reality, not only does it spend some of your opponent's mana, which could mess up their plans, but also some hero powers you don't want to use. Targeting powers of Mage, Priest, and Siphon Life would select random targets. Rogue Daggers could destroy the weapon equipped, and Life Tap and Build a Beast could overdraw you. There are some matchups that are better or worse to use this card against, but I think for the most part the actual auto-casting of all the different hero powers is fairly balanced. It definitely sucks more for a Mage to ping off one of their own minions than for Drew to gain 3 armor, but these are relatively low value plays, so it's not like they're going to have a big impact on the game. But the biggest advantage of the card is the cost of the hero power might mess up your opponent's turn. Maybe they plan to cube a Doom Guard and Dark Pact, but Lady Vosh made them automatically life tap, so now they don't have enough mana and they need to figure out a different play. If Lady Vosh only survives one turn, it could still do damage by messing up your opponent, but at the same time, most people will have a bunch of different moves they can make, so if they lose two mana at the beginning of their turn, they're probably still going to be able to make a decent play. It's a tough card to evaluate. 4-4s four usually don't survive long on the board, but with two less mana, maybe opponents will have trouble being able to kill it if you play it on curve. 
It's a really creative way to mess up your opponent's turn while also giving them value, whether it's wanted or not. But I worry that playing against this card might just be more annoying than fun. In its current state, I don't think it would be played just because it's too niche and poorly statted, but I don't want to make the card better because I sort of don't want it to see play in a lot of decks. And this doesn't mean I don't like the card or I wouldn't want it in the game. Yeah, it would suck opening it from a pack, but just gameplay wise, getting this off the RNG minion drops, such as evolving into it or getting it off of Firelands Portal, could be a fun way to spice up some games. Where some cards are polar opposites, like evolving into Bomb Squad or Earthen Elemental, I like the somewhat evenly statted minions that still create unique gameplay, like Lady Vosh. Hell, you could even make it a dragon, so dragon decks could discover it. A card doesn't necessarily have to be good or playable for it to be a good card for Hearthstone as a whole. There are plenty of minions in the game that don't see play in any deck, but I think printing a unique card like Lady Vosh is a good idea. Next up is Rolling Boulder, 6 mana shaman spell that deals 20 damage to the rightmost minion, then casts it again with the remaining damage. So for example, on this board, the boulder would kill the panda, then the hose and healer, and have the perfect 10 damage left to kill the 6-10. That's pretty good, but let's say you first traded into the Hosen Healer and Gnomish Inventor, then Rolling Boulder clears the entire board. You can see it's pretty good, and compared to other board clears, you really maximize the value you get from this card. If you look at Meteor, the 15 damage to a single minion rarely requires all 15, so there's some wasted value. With a more traditional board clear like Flame Strike, the damage is spread evenly at 4 damage to each minion, but that's overkill for small minions and not enough for big ones. With Rolling Boulder, it allocates the perfect amount of damage to each minion as it moves right to left. I like the approach to more dynamic and board positioning clears Blizzard is trying to print. Avalanche, Crushing Walls, these are great ideas for cards, but they just aren't good enough to work or they don't have a deck to support them. Boulder, on the other hand, is really good. A big board of enemy minions usually hovers around 20 to 30 health. My previous example had 28 health in total, which is a little skewed because a lot of those minions are health statted, but my point is, Rolling Boulder should be able to clear most moderate boards. Also, just being confident that in almost any situation you'll be able to clear a few minions is great. Instead of having to use another resource to finish off a minion, Boulder is going to destroy every minion from right to left until it runs out of damage. It's kind of obvious, but completely removing some enemy minions is a lot better than just weakening them. It's a great design and a really powerful card. It's probably too powerful, but instead of nerfing its cost or damage, I think the best way to nerf it would be to make it a hunter card. For certain decks to work, you need strong cards, and if you want to make a good control deck, you need to give a class a good board clear. Boulder and Hunter could really boost the possibility of a control deck. I think it works with the Hunter flavor, but what's really important is there aren't too many other powerful cards surrounding it. Don't get me wrong, there's a lot of cards Blizzard has printed for a more controlling Hunter, they just never get used. My point isn't to give this to Hunter so it never sees play, it's so Control Hunter gets a better chance of being played. And I think a powerful board clear like Rolling Boulder gives Control Hunter a chance. Also, just imagine the animation for this card, that would be amazing. Next up we have Ice Cream Elemental. Oh my god, so adorable with a cherry on top. 3 mana, 1 5 elemental with inspire, deal 1 damage to this and restore 4 health to your hero. Not going for the pun here, but the flavor of this card is actually really great. Just like when you're eating ice cream, you're slowly killing the scoop as your own body gains its strength. I mainly chose this card for the artwork done by Angela O'Hara, there's a link in the description to her work, but the card design gives a unique look in an underplayed minion category. The long term healing minions. I'm talking about tournament medic, benevolent gin, friendly bartender, lightwell, and you could probably put Priest of the Feast in there too. These are all minions that can give your hero long-term healing and unlimited value. But with the exception of Priest of the Feast, these all suck and they don't see any play. And the biggest disadvantage of these minions is they are situational. If your hero doesn't need healing, then a lot of the card's value is wasted on board, and minions don't often survive long on board, so if you play them just for their stats, it's a bad play. What separates Priest of the Feast from the other ones is its great stats and powerful ability to heal. This means it's fine to play on board when you don't need healing, and when you you do need healing, you can use spells with it to restore a bunch of health to your hero. And if you look at more recent printed cards like Benevolent Jin, I think Blizzard gave it decent stats, but the healing doesn't really pull its weight unless it can heal over two or three turns, and the minion doesn't usually survive that long. So now looking at Ice Cream Elemental, you can see it has bad Rager stats, but some decent heal. And I think for it to be played, you need to bump this card's heal value. Make it a minion you hold on to and play when you want to restore a lot of health. Change it so it heals for 6, and this will do two things. Number one, it guarantees a decent amount of heal. It's a pretty weak minion, and you really never want to play it unless you need the heal. So this makes the card situational and possibly dead in your hand. So reward the player when it is a good time to play it with a powerful heal. 
And second, it makes the card a threat on the board. Maybe not a statistical threat, but a threat against aggro's game plan. Now aggro has to put more damage to your face from the heal, and they need to get rid of Ice Cream Elemental. Even if you heal yourself only once with it, your opponent still has to deal 4 or more damage into Ice Cream instead of your face, meaning it really healed you for 10. In terms of balancing, it basically makes your hero power also holy light your hero. But still, this minion is only a 1-4 after using it for the first time, and the more you do, the easier it is for your opponent to kill it. I like the direction of well-statted minions that can give long-term heal to your hero, because then these minions are less situational and they might see some more play. But I also like taking it in a complete opposite direction, where it's a poorly statted and situational minion, but it has such a powerful heal effect that it makes up for it. This card could only work in the right deck and the right meta, maybe a control hunter could use this for heal, and maybe in an aggro heavy meta this could be played by aspiring control decks trying to survive to turn 6. I think Ice Cream Elemental is a creative hero healing minion, and above all, a great card for the thumbnail. And last up is Sea Devil Shine Snatcher. 1 mana 0-3 Warlock Murloc with a battle cry, steal 2 attack from a random minion in your hand, give it to this minion. Stealing attack is a really cool idea, it's basically the opposite of a hand buff. It will randomly take up to 2 attack from a minion in your hand. If you don't have any minions, it just plays as a 0-3, and if a minion only has 1 attack, it will be a 1-3. This means you'll get stats out onto the board early, but it also messes up your later tempo. Now in aggro, the sooner you get stats out on the board, the better, so Snatcher definitely helps in that regard. Turn 1, 2, 3 is an amazing start for any deck, and if Snatcher can deal 4 to 6 damage before it dies, then it's most likely going to be worth the later tempo loss. If you can establish a strong board early enough as aggro, then you can ride that tempo to a win, even if you play a weakened 4 drop. It's not a big disadvantage if you steal from a minion you don't need to play until the later turns, but there's always going to be the random factor of possibly stealing from your turn 2 play, and then it might be an issue. But actually, this card may work better for control. Same premise as aggro, a 2-3 is great stats, and taking 2 attack away from any of the big late game minions is no problem. They can use the 2-3 to contest aggro boards and get a good start against other controls. I think this would really only work in more aggressive metas, but there's no doubt it's still a strong card. Stealing stats from minions in your hand is a great idea that should be explored more. I'm glad this card is class specific, because something like this could be hard to balance properly for all classes. C Double Shine Snatcher does a great job of introducing this concept and creating a strong but well balanced card. Now it's time to look at the cards some of y'all submitted. Info is in the description on how to make your own cards and where to submit them. Jeremy has an interesting cursed-like card with Pirate's Greed. For Rogue, this could help you acquire coins for a crazy gadget and turn at the price of your opponent getting a lot of 2-2s. And for Warlock, Black Sea Jack gives your opponent Pirate's Greed, having them spawn 2-2s for you until they choose to play the card. Really creative idea, and I like that these examples show how both sides of the card could help either player. Hyra Tiri, probably pronounced that wrong, submitted Scrap Dawn, which is a 6 mana paladin spell that lets you discover and resummon a dead mech with some crazy buffs on top of it. Mechs haven't seen much love in a while and I think there are so few in the game that this could be a powerful card to get them some more play. It's very situational because you need to wait for one of your mechs to die, but if Blizzard came out with some cool big mechs for paladin next expansion, I could see Scrapton as the cornerstone of a big mech paladin deck. That would be a sick deck. And last up we have Gnarg Tinkerer. Similar concept to Sea Devil Shine Snatcher in that it's an early stat for later disadvantages, but this card focuses more on discard. Putting a ticking time bomb in your hand is a really interesting idea. The positioning of the bomb influences what cards will be discarded, so you may want to play certain cards in your hand to ensure the bomb discards something like Clutch Mother Zavas. Or you could try to play all the cards to the left of the bomb so it only discards the one card to the right. Or try to use your entire hand so it discards nothing. Or try to discard the bomb itself to minimize loss. It's a great idea, it's basically a terrible card in any other deck besides discard, and that's one of the reasons why I think it's so great. Thank you all for watching this week's episode, subscribe for more videos like this and others, but until then, ta-ta.